a special program featuring the Leicestershire School Symphony Orchestra. As you may have heard in yesterday's Leicester scene, they've just had a long playing record issued. A major recording company has just released this record. And here to talk about it and introduce excerpts from the record is the county music advisor, Mr. Eric Pinkett. Good evening. We are often asked by other interested educational authorities, by countries we are about to visit, and who wish to make advanced propaganda, whether we have available tapes of our concerts. And so at the back of our minds has always been the thought that one day we might make a record. Then the opportunity occurred. Last May we held the second festival of Leicestershire, in which the theme was the composer and his work, and for which several new works were commissioned and played. Here then we had in our repertoire music of real worth, which had never been recorded, music by 20th century composers, who were themselves keen to conduct the orchestra for such an occasion. Pies, the recording company, were enthusiastic, and so early on the morning of Wednesday, 5th of July, members of the orchestra set out from all the near and far parts of the county to gather in the De Montfort Hall to rehearse once more with the composers and refresh their ac acquaintance with the music, to establish balance with the engineers and, almost as a by-product, to make a television programme of a record being made. Six hours after the first notes had been struck, the technicians were satisfied and the record was in the bag. The first choice for the record simply had to be a piece of music by Sir Michael Tippett, our patron, and the very good friend of every member of the orchestra. We had played the suite in D in the festival, and this suite of five pieces had been originally commissioned for the birth of Prince Charles, and is known, indeed, as the Prince Charles Suite. Strangely, it has never been recorded, and so here it is, conducted by the composer himself. The first movement suggests the house of the parents. One hears the ringing of bells and snatches of the favourite hymn of the parent.
Last note there, played by the contrabassoon. The next movement is a berceuse, a tune played mainly by the oboe. And the third, a processional and dance, was originally conceived as a part of the Midsummer Marriage. The fourth is a carol. Now we'll play the fifth and the finale. This is a dance of thanksgiving and joy in which Sir Michael introduces a Cornish floral dance and the folk tune early one morning. The second piece I'm going to play was written barely a month before the record was made. 
we were all tremendously keen to have some of the music of Alan Ridout on the record. Alan is a young English composer, originally a pupil of Sir Michael's, who wrote a symphony for us three years ago, and for the last festival wrote a dance drama. We asked him if he had a work for the orchestra of about eight minutes duration, which would just complete our record. He had not, and so he set to work to compose one. We received the score and the part, uh, wrote out the parts and learned it within a month. It is called Concertante Music, employs the orchestra fully, has rhythmic passages alternating in 9 8, 11 8, and 12 8 time, and gives everyone a great deal to think about. There's more of this rather sinister theme, and then a return to the opening music, and finally a coda. Dr. William Mathias wrote a, an orchestral work for the festival, which he calls a Sinfonietta, and which was completed for us at the beginning of 1967. It is scored for orchestra plus piano, and with a very large and evident percussion section. 
and uses the celesta, glockenspiel, and xylophone in a fascinating way. There are three movements, all in dance form. The first and last are vigorous, and the middle movement is a languorous blues number. Here is a little of the second movement. Well, that's a little of the blues, played mainly by the flute, a part for them to revel in. Now let's hear the vigorous and witty finale, and this again is conducted by the composer.
Lastly, a divertimento by Malcolm Arnold. Uh, this was written in 1959 for the National Youth Orchestra and lent by them to us. Malcolm Arnold conducted the orchestra some years ago and we found him as lively and gay as his music. He could not be with us on this occasion and so I was delighted to conduct this last work. The first movement is a fanfare and uses six trumpets. Malcolm Hart Arnold himself was a, originally a trumpeter. The second, which we'll play first, is a nocturne in which I'm sure you'll hear all the disturbing night calls of the owl, cats and all. And lastly, a brilliant and jovial chaconne. 